Hey folks, welcome back. In this video, we're going to go over two works examples to show you how to do problems involving fundamental particles, i.e. matter particles. Now, if you haven't already done so, check out my previous theory videos covering fundamental particles, antimatter, leptons and neutrinos, and quarks, as by watching these videos, you'll be able to apply your knowledge of those to this video. So let's get started. Question 1 says an electron is an example of a lepton, which means it is a fundamental particle. Part A says what is meant by a fundamental particle? Well remember in the theory video we saw that a fundamental particle is a particle that does not consist of any other particles. It is in its simplest form. Part B then says name the antiparticle for an electron. Well remember the antiparticle for an electron was the positron, which is the symbol E with a little plus superscript, and that's to show it's got a positive charge. And lastly, for part C, it says, what is the mass and charge of the electron's antiparticle? Well, remember an antiparticle or antimatter particle will have the same mass but opposite charge to its corresponding particle. The antiparticle for the electron, i.e. the positron, will have the same mass but opposite charge to the electron. So that means its mass from the data sheet will be 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms, i.e. the mass of the electron as well. But its charge Q will be plus 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs rather than minus 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs for the electron. Lastly, part D says to name the other five leptons in the standard model. So we've got the electron so far, but we also have the electron neutrino associated with the electron, which is nu E. We have the muon, which is mu minus, and the muon neutrino, which is nu mu. We then have the tau particle, which is tau minus. And lastly, we have the tau neutrino with the symbol nu tau. And it's worth noting a pattern here that the electron, the muon, and the tau particles are all negatively charged. They all have a negative superscript as part of their symbol. Lastly, question two says every fundamental matter particle has an antiparticle. Part A says state the name given to the group of matter particles that contain leptons and quarks. Well, remember these fundamental matter particles have another name, which is fermions. Part B then says to describe how the collision of a particle with its antiparticle provides evidence for the existence of antimatter. Well, we can say that when a particle and its antiparticle collide, they annihilate each other and their mass is converted into energy. This production of energy provides evidence for the existence of antimatter. And lastly, part C says quarks are also fundamental matter particles, each with a corresponding antiquark, but they cannot exist alone. State the rule regarding the overall charge of a combination of quarks. Well, remember in the theory video, we saw that the overall charge must be a whole number, which is usually going to be 0, 1, or minus 1 for the total charge of a hadron. For example, a proton has a charge of plus 1e, and a neutron has a charge of 0. And those are both made up of three quarks each, which remember have a fractional charge, but because there's more than one quark, they combine to form an overall charge of a whole number. That's all for this video, folks. Thanks for watching. If you made it to the end, I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video one of these, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Whoa.